So that's the beauty of fear chasing is you get opportunities, you get results that you quite literally never could get because when you face the fear, it opens up a lot of other opportunities. I face one fear of flying. Now, how many things are possible? Oh, there's a speech here, there's a speech here, there's a client here. Whether it's embarrassment, judgment, rejection, not good enough, unlovable, whatever it is, figure out the core because then you're gonna be able to take back control of your own life. But if you keep unconsciously running from something that you don't think you're afraid of, you're, you're gonna be Jeff. Next Level Nation, welcome back to another episode of Next Level University, where we help you level up your life, your love, your health, and your wealth. We hope you enjoyed our latest episode, episode number 1,496, three phrases to avoid if you're trying to improve your fitness game. Today, for episode number 1,497, happy Sunday, the difference between growing around it and growing through it. I have spent a lot of time over the last six years, seven years, fear chasing and trying to be very vulnerable with my insecurities and trying to be very vulnerable with what scares me with the hope that if I become aware of what is holding me back, I can try to overcome it. And I've done a lot of work around that and it's been very challenging. It's been very heavy. It's been very scary to do a lot of the growth that I've had the opportunity and necessity to do and it's almost like when you when you grow a lot and you face a lot of your fears and you start to understand your insecurities you can really look at someone else and say oh my goodness that fear that you have is hurting you dramatically and unless you face that fear you're kind of going to be stuck at this level forever you're kind of going to be stuck behind this fear for your entire life because fears are this weird thing where you're either afraid when you think about it and you just stay afraid thinking about it forever and it becomes a fence that you're not allowed to cross or you're afraid when you're doing it but the next time you think about it you're less afraid because you have you have experience with doing it and when I was thinking about this episode I wrote something down when it comes to fear when it comes to insecurities when it comes to uncertainty you have two options. You can either overcome it or you can stay under it. If you have an insecurity that you never face, that insecurity is always going to be over your head. But if you overcome it, you become aware and then you can actually live your life with the understanding that, yes, this is something I'm afraid of. It is something that I'm insecure about, but I either let it control me or I let it coexist with who I am and who I'm becoming. I know in the back in the day, Alan, you used to use the example of horses that are afraid of cars and trucks. What they would do is they would tie them up by the highway. They would tie them to a stake by the highway so they could get used to cars going by them and they would get what's called exposure therapy. Exposed, being exposed to something that scares you in doses that are actually beneficial. So if you think a bit, think of it from an allergy standpoint, what oftentimes what happens is when you have an allergy is in order to overcome the allergy, you get microdose and microdose and microdose and microdose and microdose. The I used to actually do that. Did you do that? I used to get allergy shots. Yeah. Yeah. And then they I would was, slowly up the dose. Yeah. So all that is is it's kind of a layer or a level of exposure therapy. It really one time is they that. gave me too much. I had to go to the. ER? The the campus, not the ER, we went to the campus ER, I guess you would call it, and I had to get an EpiPen. I'm going to stay away from whoever was doing that. Thank you very much. <laughs> too much, too much yeah. of the allergy. Big pass. Yeah. Well, that's, <laughs> that, so we I could was just like, say. Hmm, I don't know if this is good. You know, I was all red, my throat was closing, and I was Well, that's, all... that's your anxiety zone. So, yeah. in exposure therapy, you can go too far, for sure. You go from not thinking you can be a speaker to getting on stage in front of 15,000 people. And that's probably too much. That's probably too much exposure. Definitely. Probably not a beneficial amount, but it really is a simple thought. The reason I wanted to do this episode, a simple thought, but it's super powerful. Unless you start dipping your toe into the pools of fear that are running you, you unfortunately are going to be stuck relatively close to where you are today. Because many of the reasons we don't do things 
are revolving around the fears that we have about those things. For me, for the longest time, I had the fear of flying. I still do. This is the thing. If, if you came to me and said, how did you overcome the fear of flying? I would say I haven't. I'm still afraid. I don't enjoy it. I'm nervous pretty much the whole time when I'm in the air. I don't like it. I get anxious when I'm traveling. I get anxious the night before. I get anxious when I'm getting on the plane. It's just way less than it used to be. It's just way less because I'm more familiar with the feelings. And when I think about it, I have a reference point. So Tara and I are going to Scotland next year. My reference point is I've flown to England before. It was terrible, but I've flown a lot of other places since then. And I feel it used to be maybe a level 10 out of 10 fear. Now it's probably a level 5 out of 10 fear. But that's not because I didn't do it. It's because I did it enough to, to move the level down. That's really my thought for this episode. Fear is this weird thing where when we run from it, it's almost like it gets bigger. It's almost like the further away you get from the fear, the more you run from it, the more you, more you try to avoid it, ignore it, it almost gets bigger because it's that monster in the closet that isn't really a monster. We just have never opened the door, turned the light on, sat with it. We've never looked under the bed as kids. We think there's monsters under the bed when we're kids. So anytime you hear a noise, you think it's the monster. Anytime you see a shadow or something, you think it's the monster. When in reality, if we faced the fear and looked under the bed, that would change our lives in a way. And that's kind of the analogy for this example, or the you analogy for this episode. Sorry, go ahead. Oh my God. Yeah, I yeah. <laughs> no, no, you're good. You're good. <laughs> I keep interrupting Kev. This week, on an uh, episode earlier this week, you talked about Batman. Doesn't Batman, correct me if I'm wrong, the, the one movie Kevin knows more than me, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, doesn't Batman, super afraid of bats, like turn that fear into yeah, power yeah. or something that's kind of he exposes himself to it on purpose that's why he becomes the batman yeah, yeah. Yep. because his deepest fear is that cave with bats when he was a kid and so in order to overcome his fear he becomes the very thing he's afraid of to to like you know and he turns that against the villains it, that's kind of a cool little analogy just wanted to add that's all you have <laughs> yeah, that's it that's there's my next level nugget nice batman. nice it depends on the <laughs> one, of the, one of the team members reached out and said best next level nugget ever batman, batman. <laughs> that was, it. That was the ahead. plan that was the plan i i don't know it's just it's one of those weird things where it it almost sounds too simple it almost it almost sounds too simple the only way to become more confident is to do things that you don't feel confident at and then eventually you feel a little more confident, a little more confident, a little more confident. Mm -hmm. If you're growing around something, maybe that's a good, maybe that's a good analogy, or maybe that's a good frame for this. If you're growing around something, that means you're evolving and you're elevating, you're going higher and higher and higher and higher. The problem is the hole that used to be three feet is now 12 feet away because you're growing, but that hole never got filled in. So it's not like if you're lacking confidence in a certain arena, if you're lacking courage in a certain arena, facing other fears might not help that fear or accomplishing things that are easy for you aren't going to fix the things that aren't. I mean, really think about it. Your fear is a three foot hole. Three feet deep. Three feet deep. Okay? Three feet deep hole. The thing you're really good at you're at five feet. So there's eight feet between where you are and the bottom of that hole. The thing you get really good at, you get really, really good at. Now you're 10 feet up. Now it's 13 feet between where you are and that hole. It actually gets harder to face that fear as you get more successful in other arenas in this analogy. Do you think, analogy. you and I have talked a lot about this. Do you think that's why sometimes really, 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 really successful people who appear to have the best lives ever take their own lives? I don't, I think a lot of it is the external, I mean, think of someone like Robin Williams. It's almost like the I way. I watched Dead Poet Society recently. It's like Taryn the, wants me to watch it. I haven't seen it it's yet. It's so good. Man. I know. She said I'm with it. her on that. It's real yeah. good. Yeah. I know but it's again, serious, remember it's in the eighties, like late eighties. Yeah, yeah. So it'll be fascinating from that sense. Cause it's not like a period piece. Here, I am geeking out about movies again. It's not a period piece about the 80s. It's actually filmed in the 80s. Yeah, yeah. So you'll see the real, what it was like back then. It's mm -hmm. a really good film. I'm with her. Yeah. 
She wants me to see it. I'd say, I know it's heavy though. It's serious. It's a serious Definitely. film. I wasn't. Yeah. I've been. I've been. It's Halloween. Try. I watched Freddy vs. Jason the other night. Oh, <laughs> what a great movie! Oh my goodness. <laughs> Tonight I'm going to have a me night. I think I'm going to watch the most recent Friday the 13th. I believe. I don't know yet. I don't know yet. But again, I don't... Very constructive yes, films. Only, I only watch educational content. Always. <laughs> <laughs> I have a soft spot for horror movies, for sure. It's, it's hard to speak on something like that because I don't know what kind of mental things were going on with with like a, a robin williams but it's almost like well you said the external results are so much different than the internal feelings that's what i feel like know. it's probably so hard to love yourself as much as other people loved him I mean, he's one of the most loved actors comedians people artists of all time of all time yeah. if you don't have that type of love for yourself i imagine it has to be very 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 triggering if you yeah. don't look at yourself the way everybody else... Because the external else... world and the internal world are, are outside of alignment. And yeah. this is... I'm not a clinician, but speaking from a clinician's perspective, with all the psychology I've studied, the, the deepest pain that humans have is when the internal world and the external world don't match. And that's... It's, it's one of those things, kind of like when you outgrow the small pot. So, for example, let's say you go... Let's say you go on a 10-year journey and you grow and you evolve and you change and you you read tons of books and you take tons of courses and you work on yourself and you have a great relationship and you, it's just this unbelievable growth journey of challenge and growth. And then you go back to an old world and you go back to like your hometown. If you think of like Forrest Gump when she went back to to the her hometown and she like threw rocks at, at the mm. place. Yeah, it's... It's kind of like, imagine that you go back and now you have this new awareness and you're this new person, but you go back to an old environment that no longer is vibrating at the same level of where you are now. If you were to stay there, how could you not be depressed? Hmm. Because you, you outgrew that place. You outgrew those people. You outgrew the, the, that environment. It's like if you, if you go all the way back to an old environment as an as a new version of you, I, I had a friend who used to say, you can be a tourist, you just can't move in. I really liked that. You can be a tourist. You can go back for sure and you can go vacation there. And 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 I think there's benefits to that because you really learn a lot about yourself. when you go. I mean, Kevin and I, on a Father's Day a couple of years ago, we went to fish at the old lake that I, I grew up on. And I, I remember that was big for me. But if I had stayed there, if I had stayed in that environment for a long time, I bet you I would have gotten depressed. Yeah, because I, I outgrew that place, you know? That makes sense. Hey, I wanted to give my experience working with Kevin and the rest of the Next Level University team. It has been such a seamless relationship. He is so easy to work with, Kevin, and he gives you all the information you need but doesn't overwhelm you. He's also um, meets you where you're at, so whatever you want to do, he'll make it work. And it's just... There's no stress, there's no drama, and everybody else that I've worked with has been patient with me because I am not technologically savvy. So they've been helpful and patient and just encouraging, and it's just been a fantastic experience. I highly, highly recommend working with them. Uh, there's a, I think there's a lot that goes into it. I think there's a lot that goes into it. But the, the whole thought is you can either grow through something or you can grow around it. And if you grow around it, it doesn't make it better. It probably makes it worse. In the long run. That, that's what I would say. You hear a lot about imposter syndrome. That's a question I get often on other shows. Like, how did you overcome imposter syndrome? I didn't. I just became more friendly with it. I still have moments of that. I'm going next week. I'm going to New Jersey and Connecticut to help clients set up their podcast stuff. And there is a piece of me that's like nervous about that. I know, I know. But it's, it's what if I don't have an answer to a question? There's like a little tiny part of you that is afraid everyone's going to find out that you're not, yeah, you know, what you, even though you are, but yeah. that's, yeah. I think that's your exile. That's, we all have an exile, which is our deepest fear and it's the fear of not being good enough. Yeah. Or disappointed. Yeah, everyone's going to find out that, you know, Kev, you don't belong here, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> when in reality, that's all just fear. Yeah. Yeah. But if I don't face that fear, it's going to run me. It's going to run me. I don't know why it's set up this way. It just is. It's set up where the things that you're afraid of the most, the things that you avoid the most, the things that you want 
the least are usually the things you have to get through to get to the next level. I know. It sucks. It does kind of suck. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it does kind of suck. But that's why growth is so hard. That's why we, we're very heavy. If you look at the last episode, it's almost like if, if getting results when it comes to fitness and nutrition and exercise and health was easy, Everybody everyone would, would have it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there wouldn't be any confusion around it. Yeah. And there wouldn't be any resistance. There wouldn't be any challenge. It wouldn't it wouldn't matter. There was a I saw something the other day where NASA just found this giant asteroid that has like gold, platinum, silver, copper, and it's something like 10,000 quadrillion dollars if we were able to like get this thing. Nice. And I'm on it. <laughs> and <laughs> it said everybody on the planet would be able to get at least a billion dollars. And the first comment was, I know that sounds really good, but if everybody on the planet got a billion dollars, then there would be, it wouldn't matter. It, it doesn't yeah. matter because that's just like, we'd all have the same amount of money and the whole thing would happen again. I, uh, I'll be brief about this, Kev, because I know we got to, we got to jump soon. But when I was a fitness coach and I used to speak on fitness, I used to have the five fundamental pillars of natural fitness. Very, very sexy title. <laughs> And sleep, hydration, nutrition, training, and mobility. What a total shocker, right? Secrets. No. So, but I used to say this. I used to say, what's the most, and I did this with every client, and I had dozens of clients. And I said, what is the most, because I was trying to get through, you know, like, listen, let's cut the BS. Like, here's the truth. What is the most desirable aspect of a physique? Guess what the answer was with every human, every single time? Abs. Abs. I said, here's why. They're the hardest to get and even harder to sustain. They're the rarest. Hmm. And they're the rarest because they're the hardest. I said, what if, and I did this on stage once. I don't know if it ever landed, but whatever. I, I literally said, what if tomorrow everyone woke up with ripped eight-pack abs? Guess what? No one would care anymore. Hmm. It wouldn't matter. No one would be filtering their photos to make sure they're better. Someone would be filtering their photos for 12-pack instead of eight-pack. Because that's how you get quote unquote significance. So here's all I'm saying. The rarest things in life are rare for a reason. And it's because they're difficult to get. It's because they, they require you to face your fears. They require you to do things you don't want to do. And so Kev, you're going to go to that place and build that studio. But if you allowed your exile to run you, your fear, your, your fear of not being good enough to run you, you would avoid that. For sure. You would avoid it because you're so afraid to be found out. I'm not good enough. That I'm, they're going to ask me a question that I'm not going to know. And I'm going to look bad. I'm going to be embarrassed. It, everyone's afraid to be embarrassed. Everybody. Everybody's afraid to be embarrassed. Some of us are just aware enough to go, you know what? I'm probably going to get pretty embarrassed here. But I got to do it anyway. Because my dreams could require it. You know? I mean... The world is full of people that have made huge blunders. Some some of them on national television, right? But those people took a risk and that's what it takes. And so the last piece I want to share here is I think that all of us are deeply fearful. I, I never used to identify as someone who was deeply fearful. The truth was is I didn't identify as deeply fearful because I didn't have the same fears as most people. I didn't realize that until recently, Kev. Mm. I don't have... Because people would always tell me, like, I'm afraid of you know, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, well, I'm not afraid of that stuff. I'm afraid of other stuff. Like, honestly, I'm afraid that everyone's going to think I'm arrogant. Definitely. No one else said that. No one else is like, I'm really afraid I'm going to come off arrogant. No one else ever said that. Hmm. So I didn't think I was that afraid. You know, I am definitely. For the people out there who, who are fearful, that's everyone. You have to identify what the fear is. Because that messed me up for a long time. I didn't get it. I didn't understand. It's like, well, I'm not afraid of that. That doesn't mean I'm not fearful. No. It just means I'm not afraid of the same things as other people. And so whether it's embarrassment, judgment, rejection, not good enough, unlovable, whatever it is, figure out the core because then you're going to be able to take back control of your own life. But if you keep unconsciously running from something that you don't think you're afraid of you're you're gonna be jeffed if 
you you have two opportunities. You either overcome it or you stay under it. I'm convinced of that. I'm convinced. 100% convinced of that. You either live under the umbrella or you walk out into the rain and then look up and see what's up there. But you can't see what's up there if you live under the umbrella, unfortunately. And then the other thing is, if you're always living under the umbrella, you never get the sun either. When it stops raining and it's sunny, the umbrella blocks that too. So that's the beauty of fear chasing is you get opportunities... You get results that you quite literally never could get because when you face the fear, it opens up a lot of other opportunities. I face one fear of flying. Now, how many things are possible? Oh, there's a speech here. There's a speech here. There's a client here. We're going to get married here. We're going to vacation here. It's completely different. You face the fear of speaking. It's a different life. You face the fear of speaking. You can do social media content. You can get a different job. You can start a podcast. You can start a YouTube channel, whatever it is. The whole, yeah, your whole life would be different because of that. One fear can change a lot for you. What's your next level nugget, sir? That is my next level nugget. You either overcome or you stay under. Fears and securities. My next level nugget is identify what the fear actually is because it might be different than other people. And if you feel like you're not fearful, just try to be honest with yourself because if you are. I mean, you just are. I've... I've coached a lot of people at this stage and everyone's fearful. They're just fearful of very different things. Some people are afraid of success, genuinely. Other people are afraid of failure. Figure out which end you're on and and work from there. As always, if you have not joined our private Facebook group, Next Level Nation, yet, please do. If you're looking for a group of like-minded humans who are into growth, they practice vulnerability, and they want to get to the next level, that is a great place for you. As always, the link will be in the show notes, and we would love to have you there. The other day, this was Tuesday, I believe, or Wednesday, our app went down. We have an app called Optimal. It's a habit tracking app to keep you on track towards your dreams. And it went down. And the good news about that is that a bunch of people reached out and said, hey, by the way, hey, by the way, hey, by the way, which was cool for us because it's like, holy crap, awesome. People are using this thing. So uh, the app is back up. We, we have paid our bills. <laughs> um, and if you want to use the app, if you want to track habits, it starts you out at three habits. Simple, simple, simple. And it's it's green light, yellow light, red light. If you do the habit, you get green. If you kind of do the habit, you get yellow. If you don't, you get red. So for example, if 15 minutes of mobility is one of your habits and you do 10 minutes, you'd get you know a yellow. If you do 15 plus minutes, you'd get green. If you didn't do it at all, like me, you'd get red. Um, a lot of red lights on my app if you want to check it out you can look at my instagram story i'm actually tracking habits every single day on the app leading by example and i put a post every single day of what my habits are and hashtag habit tracking tomorrow for episode number 1498 an important lesson for perfectionists i've been working with many perfectionists as of late and i've learned many lessons i do not identify myself as a perfectionist i do prefer messy action usually but I do understand why not everybody is that way. So we will talk about that tomorrow. As always, we love you. We appreciate you. Grateful for each and every one of you. And at NLU, we do not have fans. We have family. We will talk to you all tomorrow. Keep facing those fears. Next Level Nation.